Welcome back. A big week for President Biden in Washington. Wednesday, the president spoke directly to the American people from the Oval Office for the first time since ending his reelection bid. Thursday, he met in that same office with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. We have reports on both events, starting with ABC's Christiane Cordero. Tonight, President Joe Biden shared in his own words his decision to withdraw from the race for the White House. I revere this office. I love my country more. Biden's speech followed weeks of pressure from the Democratic Party sparked by his performance at the presidential debate in June. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. Not since Lyndon Johnson in 1968 has a sitting president not sought re-election. LBJ's message 56 years ago. I have put the unity of the people first. I put it ahead of any divisive partisanship. Echoed in the Oval Office again tonight. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think is more important than any title. The First Lady with a handwritten note saying in part, thank you for the trust you put in Joe. Now it's time to put that trust in Kamala. And Vice President Kamala Harris, now the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, with this salute to President Biden. He has extraordinary determination and profound compassion for the people of our country. Former President Trump watching tonight's address after attacking his new rival by notably mispronouncing her name over the cheers of a galvanized crowd. This November, the American people are going to tell her, no thanks, Kamala, you've done a terrible job. You've been terrible at everything you've done. You're ultra liberal that we don't want you here. We don't want you anywhere. Kamala, you're fired. Get out of here. You're fired. Both Trump and Harris have events scheduled for tomorrow. Trump is set to speak at a Bitcoin convention in Nashville. Harris will deliver the keynote at the American Federation of Teachers convention in Houston. Christian Cordero, ABC News, the White House. Earlier, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed a joint session of Congress. It was a thunderous, largely Republican welcome, with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu offering a full-throated defense of Israel's war in Gaza and no mention of a ceasefire. Our enemies are your enemies. Our fight is your fight. And our victory will be your victory. There was a sizable contingent of Democrats in the chamber, but dozens of high-profile lawmakers, including Nancy Pelosi, skipped the event. Vice President Kamala Harris, who would normally preside, and Senator J.D. Vance not in attendance due to scheduling conflicts. Netanyahu tried to bridge the divide in an emotional moment, introducing rescued hostage Noah Argamini, who had been seized during the horrific October 7th Hamas massacre. The Israeli leader praising not only President Biden, who traveled to the war zone just days after the attack. I thank President Biden for his heartfelt support for Israel. After the savage attack on October 7th, he rightly called Hamas sheer evil. But former President Trump as well. I also want to thank President Trump for all the things he did for Israel. Yet it is clear why Netanyahu came with more than 39,000 Palestinians killed by the Israelis in Gaza, according to the Hamas Health Ministry, and hundreds of thousands facing starvation, Netanyahu is appealing to Americans to stand firm in what he frames as a battle between good and evil. Israel will fight until we destroy Hamas's military capabilities and its rule in Gaza and bring all our hostages home. Martha Raddatz, ABC News, Washington. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.